Hi folks, welcome back to Coffee with Ravi. Uh, today I thought I'd do a little uh, fun topic which is about coffee. Is uh, coffee good for your health? And uh, what does caffeine do to the body? Coffee and tea are among the most popular beverages in the world. A variety of plants which start with coffee, tea, cocoa beans from which chocolate comes from and yerba mate and guarana berries which are other uh, products that can have caffeine. Caffeine, of course, is added to certain other artificial drinks uh, like uh, Monster or Red Bull uh, and energy shots and tablets. The caffeine content uh, is uh, variable in various beverages. The important thing that I wanted to uh, point out is that coffee uh, has certain other biological active substances like chlorogenic acid, alkaline, trigonelline, and there's also a specific substance called melanoidin, which is produced during the roasting of coffee. These seem to have some beneficial effects because they're in, they have certain other uh, uh, biological activity on the human body, which may be of some benefit as we'll get into. A common question that I get asked is, what's the common caffeine content in each cup that we consume of coffee? The, a 12 ounce cup of coffee that's brewed the standard way, such as in a coffee shop, has about 235 milligrams of caffeine in it. A shot of espresso has 63 milligrams. Energy shots can range anywhere from 80 to 100. Uh, some, some of the over-the-counter drugs for alertness have about 200 milligrams and headache medicine with caffeine has 65 milligrams with it. So there's a whole range of it. Coffee is normally absorbed uh, within 45 minutes of taking coffee and peaks shortly after that and lasts for about two hours. The thing to realize is that as coffee is metabolized, some people metabolize it faster and some people metabolize it slower. In fact, there's some genetic tests available uh, to check with that. Smoking seems to accelerate it. In other words, if one smokes and drinks coffee, the caffeine is metabolized out of the system faster. Pregnancy, on the other hand, seems to slow down the met metabolism of uh, caffeine. There are certain drugs like ciprofloxacin, some cardiovascular drugs, albutrol type inhalers, etc., that can actually increase the level of caffeine because they slow the metabolism down. The next slide, uh, which uh, looks at caffeine intake on different organ systems, and I'll go through it because I think this is really the meat of the talk. Caffeine on the brain, we all know, increases the mental performance and alertness. However, if taken later, as we know, uh, in the day, it can cause insomnia and high doses in some people can cause anxiety. It's been shown to reduce the risk of depression and can be added, have additive effect on the effects of NSAIDs on headaches. There is some suggestion of data that it may slow the risk of Parkinson, developing Parkinson's disease. So those are the effects on the brain. Caffeine has been used in the medical field to treat apnea or breath holding in premature infants. There seems to be a slight improvement in the ways that lungs function with caffeine. On the liver, it seems to decrease the risk of liver scarring, cirrhosis, and cancer. On the kidney tract, we all know that the more coffee we drink, the more times we go to the bathroom because that causes the uh, body to uh, push out more water. On the heart, on the short term, it raises the blood pressure but doesn't seem to have any long-term uh, side effects. Uh, patients, uh, 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 people who drink coffee on the long term, uh, the blood pressure, do it doesn't have an effect. On the endocrine system, it helps overall, uh, 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 not helps, but rather initially slows down the effect on how the insulin acts on the muscle, but I think that's a maybe transitory side effect and goes away. So in other words, it's a wash as it relates to the endocrine system. On the reproductive system, especially in females, there's a little risk of slowing fetal growth and increasing the risk of pregnancy loss. So that's something to think about during pregnancy. Can you get coffee poisoning? Rare, but can happen in the following scenario. 
in general, you need to, one needs to get down about 75 to 100 cups of coffee, standard coffee, over a very short period, which is uh, very hard to do, but can happen with energy drinks or tablets, especially energy drinks with alcohol. There's been some suggestion that uh, uh, of case reports where people get admitted with cardiovascular or heart-related side effects. So, uh, the habit of uh, 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 Red Bull uh, with uh, vodka or uh, uh, those kind of combinations need to be uh, uh, avoided. On chronic disease, uh, there's really uh, no bad effect on the heart system. There seems to be a slight effect in raising good cholesterol. There's a small effect of if one consumes about three cups of coffee per day of decreasing the risk of stroke. And it seems to increase the way your body processes food. In other words, it raises the metabolism. There's a s decreased risk of melanoma skin cancers and non-melanoma skin cancers as well as breast cancer and prostate cancer if you look at it as a group. These are small trends. The thing to understand about literature with coffee is that sometimes it's hard to study. These are retrospective in the sense that people need to remember how much they drink. So it's really not very accurate data but within the realm of interpreting data these are the trends. So in other words these are trends. Don't take it to the bank. In conclusion I think, based on this uh, review, that coffee is safe uh, and uh, can re perhaps reduce the risk of several chronic diseases. Safe limits seem to be up to about 400 milligrams in adults and 200 milligrams uh, for pregnancy uh, uh, and lactating women. So if you're enjoying a cup of coffee, go ahead, do it without guilt, but watch the effects it has on you. Thank you for joining us today.